Hey, this is Overpass Insights. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, I want to talk about the end of Corona SDK. So if you've seen any of my videos on my favorite game frameworks, you will know that I've been partial to Corona SDK. So I learned how to use Corona and Lua, which is not my favorite language. In terms of languages go, Lua is not my favorite, but I learned how to use Corona back in 2012. I've read several books on it. Every time there was a new book that came out, I read it. I listened to the Corona Geek podcast each week and it was something I enjoyed doing. So whenever there's a, a game that I have to code myself or my, you know, my go-to has always been Corona, right? So like my developers would usually go with Unity. I know that we've done some projects in Cocos 2DX and we've done some in LibGDX. I think, yeah, I think that's what it is. So it depends on what it is, but my personal go-to has been Corona. And um, you know, I'm, like, when I do updates to our own games or sometimes I've done some client stuff where I code myself, use Corona. However, over the past few years, I've been worried about the company you know disappearing so for the longest time it was closed source in the beginning i was playing like 600 600 dollars a year for a license of corona and then it became free and then it became you know plugins to remove splash screens all that kind of stuff however even last year i was trying to think about a, a client project to do and it's like can we do this in Corona or do they still exist? I checked their blog to make sure that they still have stuff going on. And even last month, we're starting a new game project. And I was, and I was toying with the idea of, you know, maybe rather than give this to my developers who want to do it in Cocos 2DX, I was like, I'll do this myself in Corona because a lot of times with games, there's a lot of small tweaks and changes stuff. And it, you know, when you're working with an offshore team, it can be a little bit more difficult, but I checked the Corona site again, just to make sure they still exist and all that kind of stuff. And sure enough, just last week, they had a blog post talking about the roadmap for 2020, which is a Corona Labs annual update. It says it's 2020, and many of you have been waiting for a roadmap for next year, yada, yada. But it says, first, let us separate the business uh, entity Corona Labs from the product Corona. On May 1st, 2020, Corona Labs as a business entity will cease to operate. The main reason for this decision is the difference between income of, of this business generates and the operational expenses demanded. We assume that many of you as mobile business owners yourself can relate to this move. We appreciate your understandings, et cetera, et cetera. So basically what, what they did last year was they took uh, the Corona engine and moved it open source, uh, but they still existed at his company, but they're gonna disappear as a company and it's just gonna go completely open source, which might still work going forward or it might be like Parse where it just sort of disappeared. This is a, I got a, a trend in software company. Whenever you have something where you're relying on another company uh, to do your infrastructure, you run the risk of them just disappearing, right? Or they, they run out of money or they just can't make ends meet, right? And that's just the way it is. All businesses have to have cash coming in. They have to have a proper revenue stream. And if you can't see what the revenue stream or is, then you you maybe should be a little bit worried. Sometimes I worry about Firebase, you know, if, if Firebase ever has that kind of problem. I, I had the same issue with Parse. Parse was one where you know, we, we put a bunch of apps into Parse, which was a few years ago. Facebook owned it. And then they just they decided one day, okay, we have to shut down Parse. It's not making any money. We're gonna take Parse and we're gonna open source it. And then, you know, I don't know if anybody ever maintained it, but I never used it again. And I worry this about Corona. So anyway, I just wanted to point out for those of you guys who missed it. I mean, I missed it last week. It's a sad day, a sad day for me because, you know, I. I grew, I grew to like it. I, I knew, you know, learned all the plugins, did all the kind of stuff, see what, what's available in Corona. And now maybe I need to get off my fat butt and learn how to use Unity or, or Cocos 2DX or one of the other ones. That probably be Unity, you know, uh, finally. But anyway, for those of you guys, for those of you guys out there, are you, are you a Corona developer? And how do you feel about this information? Because I mean, ideally somebody would be maintaining the open source libraries and everything will still continue to go on as it does. But I mean, the risk is just too high. I think I'd rather just move on to one of the other ones. Uh, but you know, it's been drying up for a while. So anyway uh let me know what you, does it does it hit you hard does it hit you as hard as it hits me uh anyway that is it for today i'll talk to you guys again tomorrow